All right, welcome to part one of the Alundra tutorial. Um, this is on the US version of Alundra. The strats are very similar to the Japanese version. Um, strats are probably a bit different to Powell just because of the, the weird timing differences between the two, but um, for the most part, if you learn the US version, you'll have way less of an issue going to the, uh, the Japanese version for that one. So um, just before we get started here, if you're doing this run, you want to do this without with a memory card in either your emulator or on your console, um, but you cannot have an Alundra save already on there. You have to do a run without a save already, and that's just for consistency's sake. Um, if you're on console, you want to play it with fast disk speed turned on. The game can be completed with it on. Uh, it does weird things to the game, but just know that uh, you do need to have this on. So uh, we start timing for Alundra from uh, when we hit start here. So that's where I'll hit my splits. So three, two, one, go. The X button uh, select starts in um, any version of the game. So the uh, the first bit of Lundra here, uh, we have some control. If you haven't already, watch the, um, the part zero of this tutorial, which goes over movement tech. Um, but essentially in the uh, first part here on the ship, we're gonna be doing a lot of dash turning and uh, just going between um, some rooms on the ship and doing all the plot triggers to get past this part. There's no combat. Um, we just gotta talk to two different NPCs. One of them we talked to him twice. That's what's going on here. As a refresher for the controls, D-pad moves, um, and the uh, the triangle button is dash, and talk is the square button. So first we go up here, hold down triangle, and then start your dash in over to the uh, captain's cabin. Ideally, you do that without having to restart your dash. And you don't bonk there. Anyways, you talk to the captain first, go through all his text. There's significantly less text in the Japanese version, but in the US version, there's a lot. So once you talk to him, you leave again, go over here into the left cabin, talk to this guy, leave again, and now we're going back to the, um, the upper room of the, uh, the captain's cabin. Um, when you're doing these dash turns, you can uh, you can start and stop them um, slightly before the turns, and you'll kind of like rub your face up against the wall instead of bonk. Like right there, like that. So that's just part of that. And then here's where we get to the uh, the big old plot section. There's uh, about two or so minutes here of. Um, just plot stuff happening so I'm gonna turn on turbo on my controller here and speed up the emulator to very fast percent so we can get through this a bit faster than normal because I've seen this uh, this cutscene many many times so anyways the uh, while this is going I'll go over like exactly which route we're, um, we're showing for this oh also another thing to note here is that for whatever reason um, even though this uh, this cutscene is kind of autopilot, if you um, tap on the square button, it gets through it slightly faster. We're not sure why that's the case, but that's the case. Um, so anyways, the, uh, the route for this is, um, let's say the beginner route through Lundra. There's, so, there's only so much you can really do to um, make the route safer than just doing really risky strats, but... Um, the route that I'm going to detail uses almost all of the fastest strats in the run, and it'll also point out a lot of the, uh, the safety safety items that are in the run. Uh, a big portion of um, a Lundra uh, Japanese version runs, and even more so US version runs, is that you can die very easily and very quickly in the run. Um, so it's, it's really important for people um, starting out learning the run that uh, you know where to get all the healing stuff and when to use it so I'll point those out in pretty much all the occasions whenever we pass by them. I'm also playing this in BizHawk by the way if you're wondering which emulator this is on. Um, I really recommend BizHawk because there's uh, it's got really good safe state managing stuff so if you're doing a lot of safe states for practice um, there's easy ways to have 10 different uh, safe states 
um, easily reachable, and then there's a way to make named save states, which is also really good. Because I have like, I have a hundred or so different save states. Probably more than that, probably more than a hundred save states um, that I could easily call up and, uh, and make unique uh, save states throughout the run. Which I recommend that you do as well as you're going through uh, uh, like walkthroughs of the game and, uh, and practicing all the strats because this game has a lot to it and the more save states the better. So we're almost through this cutscene here. Luckily, as far as like parts of the game that uh, you can't really speed up or slow down, there isn't that much in this. All right, I'm gonna put this back on 100% speed. This is how fast it should go. So we're gonna get control back here of Alundra um, in what I call the drunk room. So in this room, um, I'm going to make a save state here and then show you what happens here. If you're just moving around, you can see Alundra is like moving side to side and up and down and left and right. You can see that's no good. But if you jump, you get slightly more control of Alundra here. You can see I jumped over that uh, that set of crates there. Sometimes that doesn't happen. So let's reload our safe state. Let's head on here. So when you get to about here, you want to also be jumping and hitting the square button at the same time to pick up a crate to get through there quickly. So ideally, whenever you're jumping, you jump directly over the crate that's blocking that passage, but that doesn't always happen. So that's, uh, that's how you want to do that room. Um, there's only like, I think there's two or three drunk rooms in the entire game. Um, so don't make it too big a deal, a big deal or not. So, getting through that part extremely fast on that. Just know that things are a little bit weird in that room and it's not going to fit if things go sideways. So we got a little bit more cutscene stuff here. And there's a few spots on the run where the, um, the text will auto advance like that. Um, the text skipping tech for the rest of the game is pretty different, which we'll get to that. So um, how text skipping works in most of the game is that you need to hold down the square button while text fills up in the, uh, the text box, let go um, once it's fully on the, uh, the line is finished or the, the window is finished, and then you need to hit square again to either clear the line or clear the text box, and then repeat. So it's hold down, tap, hold down, tap, hold down, tap to go through the lines. So that's what it's going to look like here. So this is Jess. He's going to be with us the whole game. So, believe it or not, a big part, like, uh, and not insignificant part of the Alundra speedrun is properly skipping text. So in the US version, um, there's three lines of text in the text boxes, or there can be. And there's um, a lot of occasions where the third line will just be empty. Um, and it kind of throws off the text skipping, especially if you're used to the Japanese version, which has two lines of text. So that's just another thing you gotta get used to. Alright, so now that we got control again here of Alundra, here we are in Jess's house. Uh, we're gonna be through here a lot, so getting used to the, uh, the dashing in this part is uh, something you want to get used to. When you go downstairs here, this is one of the few occasions where you want to dash down here. So we're going to dash all the way over here to the door where it auto-stops us to have a conversation with Jess. So we clear all this, and then we can head on out. Um, in some other parts, it's actually not fast to dash down those stairs, which I'll point out when we get there. All right, so after that little conversation with her, we're going to dash down over here. To Wendell's house, which is the house right on over there, where there's going to be a little cutscene here. I'm going to fast forward through this bit. If you see the arrows in the upper left, that means that I'm fast forwarding. The sound also turns off, which is nice, so that we don't have to listen to the sped up sound effects. We got all this. All right, so right there is where we get control back. So we're going to dash on out and head on over to Septimus's house. Here's one of those occasions where you want to not start off by dashing. Just walk around the corner and then dash up. 
up here into Septimus's house. We're gonna go over here, talk to him. Alright, and over there. So this is where we get our first quest in the game from Septimus. We're gonna get a, a big old section of uninterrupted gameplay soon after this. And the, uh, the splits that I have in the bottom right part of the screen are the same splits that I use for my run. So if you want to know exactly when I split during the run, um, it'll match the splitting that I do here in the tutorial. Okay, after that, we get control back, and we can head on over to Tarn's Manor. The fastest way to get to Tarn's Manor is to go north through this exit of town, which is the north uh, northwest exit of town. And then we're going to head a few screens to the east, past the sanctuary, so we're going to jump over that, uh, that little thing here, go straight over this way. Here it's good to start off by going up and to the right a little bit, so that you don't have to mess around with short dashes to get past all that. Then down these stairs, right around this tree, hop up here, and then we're going to dash turn into this little uh, section here. This is a cutscene where you don't get damage to them, and then you just want to walk into Tarn's Manor. This is where I split. So in Tarn's Manor, you want to hold down this, and then hold up. You go up to this. So, um, the US version, enemies have 1.5 times the amount of health as the Japanese version. Um, so fights take, this fight, the enemies take two hits instead of one. I'm going to make a save state here. Do you want to take out these Merg? If any of them drop money or health, you're going to want to get that money. So up here, we go in this room, open this door, and then now we're into this part. Um, if you ever have anything... Like... Here. <clears throat> you can see here, we could either use the sword on these guys, or the better choice in this case is to throw a crate at him. If you use a throwable item on an enemy, it will always one-shot them. So in this case, we want to be using these. Like this. We just one-shot those enemies. Here, we dash past that. And then you do a shoulder charge into that, uh, that last switch. So that you don't have to do a standing slash on that. Throw a barrel on that switch. And now this room has an interesting solution to it. So, um, you're intended to put four barrels onto these switches here. But, oh, okay, that didn't quite go to plan. Plan B. We'll get this one. So right here, um, instead of putting two barrels on here, we're instead going to use the dash turn. So we're going to run to the left, trigger both of these, and then run right. So you want to um, time your dash turn so that happens right about there. We'll do a save state here. So that can take a little bit of practice, but it's not um, it's not too difficult to uh, to make that. You can even get away with doing it, like, three quarters of the way through the button. Like right there. So you, you have plenty of leeway for doing that. Um, I believe that's a Gilded Falcon in there, so you don't need that. I think this maybe has a uh, an herb, yeah. So if you need a safety herb, there's one in there. And up here, we go hit the switch. Um, in the Any% percent run, you should never be getting a Gilded Falcon. Hit this three times to go into this room. Um, the intended solution to this room is to go around and hit all the buttons around here, but right on here, if you jump from this over to here, you can make the jump. So, we're gonna go like this, and then right about there, if you actually jump at the current time. Right there. So you don't necessarily have to make this jump while you're running. You can be standing still to make jumps. Uh, momentum doesn't matter at all for a lender platforming. But as you can see from there, you need to be 
right there. So you can you can gauge this by looking at the edge of Alundra's shadow. That the shadow is about halfway through this um, this lighter colored portion of the um, of the bricks here. And then you want to be kind of on the kind of hanging off of the uh, the lower edge of the bricks there. So this is the first like relatively major skip there. And another thing that you can do if you if you can't quite get the, the setup here correctly, um, a thing that you can do is pause buffer. So if you want to move like one pixel at a time, you can do that. So you can hit a D-pad direction and then start at the same time, and you'll move two pixels. If you do that and then hold down triangle, you'll move one pixel. So that's uh, that's a good way to do those um, those types of setups. That was two pixels off there, so do this, and then uh, make our way over to. So we go get this key, and we move and up the stairs. And grab this. If you're playing on console, this um, uh, this jingle that plays whenever you get a major item from a chest plays at double speed. Um, so that's a good way to tell if somebody's playing on console or emulator or not. I'm playing on emulator, so we don't get the, uh, the fast jingle. Now we dash up here. Right up here. So in this room, there's Merg down here. Um, you're gonna dash turn right down this kind of space. So you, you want to be lined up with this crate when you're, um, when you're dashing down. And that'll get past all the, uh, all the Merg there. Okay, so in this room, this is where the uh, the Book of Elna is, which we need for our quest. Um, there's also two chests up here. This chest has an herb. This chest has money. Um, for what we want to do, we want to get this if we're being safe for healing, which we'll get because this is a beginner run. We're going to get that herb. And then here we're also going to get this. This is pretty much required for the money route. We'll get into the money route later. But essentially, it's for an MP potion, is what that, uh, that money is for. So Melzus talks to us in the, uh, the little cutscene here. And now we're going to be heading out of the, uh, the manor. So back to the big room, and we're going to exit the same way that we came in. So right out this way, down the stairs, and back through the door that we came in. This is where I split, right there. Once the, uh, the screen turns black... So now we're going to head back to uh, Inoa. We're gonna go back the way we came as well. Up this way. And we're going to be entering town throughout the uh, the northern the northern right entrance. So there's two north entrances to the town. One on the left side, one on the right side. The one on the right side is the one we're gonna use to go back to town. Because it's faster to where we want to go. So the next stop is Wendell's house, is the first house that we entered after we woke up. So that's the one on the, the left side of town here, kind of at the, the mid middle area of the town. So right here is Wendell's house. And this will be kind of an autopilot section here, so I'm going to speed this up while there's a cutscene. And then the, the next dungeon coming up here is Wendell's Dream, which is kind of the first spot where we do a lot of... Um, precision dashing throughout the uh, throughout the dungeon. So here, um, a difference between the... Um, actually, I don't think there's a choice here, but um, a bit later, we're going to see our... Here we go. Okay, so in the Japanese version, you can just keep mashing square to do these yes or no choices, but for whatever reason, in the North American and PAL versions, you have to hit X to confirm your selection. So just keep that in mind, that you can't just keep mashing square mindlessly throughout the whole thing. You actually have to hit X to, uh, to confirm your selection. Okay, so. This is Wendell's Dream. So first thing we're gonna do is dash up here to the cutscene. You just keep holding, holding your dash right up to the, uh, the top of this. There's a little cutscene of Wendell. Doing Wendell stuff, so we'll We'll just skip through this a little bit.
Okay, so here's where we get control again. So first things first, we want to hit down and then attack at the same time. And that'll hit that switch. And then next is a big sequence of dashing. So just follow this path. Try not to bonk at all. Um, you want to do a shoulder charge into all the switches in this part. Just like that. And then we head back the way we came. Go past this part, down. If you're too early in letting go of your dashes, you can just do a dash in the same direction again. Dash uh, shoulder charge into that one. Dash into that one. That's the last switch we have to hit. Up through this, that pathway is kind of hidden there. And then here. Um, so in this part, there's a little fight um, in the next section here, which uh, where you um, go up on this bridge determines which enemies are aggroed to you in this next part. So I'm going to make a save state here just to show you the difference. So we're going to enter the screen on the right side, and we'll see which enemies... Um, aggro you. So you can see all of them except the one on the left aggroed. If we go up on the left side like this we can see that all of them except the one on the right aggroed. So I believe if we go up the middle I think this gets all of them? Oh. Alright, well you can slightly move to the left to get uh, all of those. So this is the US version. The slimes take uh, two extra hits to kill in this version. So what I do, you might have noticed at the start of that fight, that uh, I stood still for a little bit before I started the fight, and that caused the slimes to um, converge towards me and kind of bunch up. Uh, if you start the fight by moving, they can start moving all around this whole area, and you have to chase them down for a bit. So that's how I kind of corral them. Alright, so in this next bit here, this, uh, this little section is the same every time. Here, I'll do it slow. You go down this way, up this way, down here, and then just go straight over here to the boss. So, ideally you do this while dashing, like that. Right over there to the boss. Okay. And that's where I split. Once, you, uh, once your feet come to a stop right here is where I split, because I do um, boss splits for my... Uh, uh, my splits. Okay, so now this is the gelatinoid. Okay, so uh, this is a gelatinoid boss. Um, its hitbox is roughly that big. Um, there's two ways you can damage the boss. The first way is with a sword slash like that. The second way is a shoulder charge like that. The shoulder charge does double damage to the boss. So, you're going to want to do shoulder charges to the boss when you can get away with it. You can see that if you shoulder charge for too, uh, too long, you collide with the boss and lose health. Um, so when you're just starting out, I would recommend just hitting him with the, with the dagger um, to not lose so much health. And then once you get more used to the combat, um, then you can switch over to the, uh, the shoulder charges. Also, this uh, this enemy is predictable in how it moves. It'll always move towards you um, every time you hit. So if you get it like this, you can predictably like that. Okay. So once you hit it for a bit, it takes forever. It seems in the U.S. version, in the Japanese version, it doesn't take that long. Uh, it splits up into smaller clones of itself. Just like that. Okay, so now it splits up into four. And when it splits up into four, you want to um, you want to make sure to hit it immediately once it splits up into four, so that you can do damage to all four of us. And when it splits up into smaller ones, they start to move erratically again. So this is one of those points where you kind of need to keep track mentally of how many times you've hit each one. Because they split up again after this next part here. Uh, and you don't actually want to have them split up into these smaller ones all at the same time. Because the game lags out when that happens. 
And uh, just like with the big form, during this fight... Okay. I'll show you what, uh, what the game looks like when you have all of them on screen at once. So, um, when you're playing on console, this runs at like... 2 FPS. <laughs> so you generally don't want to have all these things on screen. Right? On emulator, it seems it's not as big of a deal, because it just runs at 60 FPS all the time. Um, but on console, you absolutely do not ever want to have all, uh, all 16 on screen at once. Um, so during that fight, you want to pick up all the health that drops and all the money that drops. Um, ideally, we want to get to 60 Gilder um, by the end of the fight. And you want to be on as much health as possible. So let's uh, let's do this again quickly. So again, just like when it's... Uh, just like when the... Uh, It splits up into the smaller ones earlier. You want to hit them immediately when they split out. Just that you can get uh, get hits in on um, all of them at the same time. And a note about uh, how drops work in Alundra. Uh, the drops aren't generated until they... Uh, until you destroy whatever is going to do the drop there. So you can see I have 3 health now and 45 killed there. Uh, and the way that I split, by the way, for bosses, is when he holds up the sword here and it goes shing, um, that is when I split. So that's kind of the, the way that I do consistency for uh, for all that. So we're going to leave the health at 3 for now, and the money at 45 is also about on par for how it should be. Um, so if your health is low at any point in the run, there's multiple ways that you can get it back. So we'll go into that after this, uh, this next bit here. So we got a whole bunch of plot here. We're just going to... Fast forward through this. And the uh, the dungeon coming up, dungeon in quotes, is uh, Olin's Nightmare. It's uh, very short. We'll get to that when we get to that. And also, regarding the gelatinoid fight, if you're having trouble with it, don't worry about it too much. It's actually one of the harder fights in the game, if you can believe that. <laughs> Being the, the first real boss in the game, um, it's probably a bit harder than it really should be compared to uh, a lot of the other bosses. So don't get too worked up over um, dying to that boss a lot in practice and having trouble with it, because that's, uh, that's pretty common. That's a gelatinoid for you. So this is, uh, this is all on autopilot until we get inside of the sanctuary. Um, just like before, there's a yes or no question from, uh, from Ronan when we're talking to him. Uh, in the Japanese version, you can just keep spamming the, uh, the square button to hit yes. In the US version, which is what this is, you need to hit um, the cross button, the X button, to say yes. If you say no, he just uh, he says, hey, you should probably pray. So you got to hit yes. So always hit yes for that. There's no point in saying no. Okay, so now we get control back here. And now we're going to go head back to Septimus's house. Um, but this is where the runs become kind of variable. Our health is currently at... At... Three. So there's multiple ways you can fix this. One, we can use one of these healing herbs. Um, since we're, we're already on the overworld and we're not in any huge danger right now, um, what we can do instead is, on the way back to Septimus' house, we can go cut some grass. So this is pretty much RNG. <laughs> Whether or not we get a health drop, there's a ton of grass over here, as you can see. So there's one, one health drop. There's just a ton of it here, and we've only gotten one health drop, which that's pretty horrible. But that's sometimes a lender just does that to you. Um, so there we go. We got seven. Um, our maximum health is eleven. Seven is kind of cutting it a bit close for what's coming up here. Um, so if you needed to get more um, down south here, there's these three. 
And if you still aren't comfortable with that amount of health, you can just reload this area. Um, having to reload this part just takes forever, as you can see. It even takes forever on console. So there we go. Now it's dropping health. So we get this, this, and that gets us back to our maximum health. So, again, if the game is not dropping health for you, that's not your problem. That's not your fault. That's just randomness in Alundra. There's nothing you can do about it. Okay, so now that we have proper health, we go back to Septimus's house, where we're going to fast forward for some plot stuff here. So Septimus talks, us, talks uh, for a bit, and then during this you can hold down um, down on the D-pad, because that's all we have to do for the next bit. That triggers a, uh, a little cutscene here. So we'll do normal speed. Alright, so right here, hold down. There's no reason to dash down because there's um, there's kind of a trade-off in if the distance is super short, it actually costs you time to uh, um, to dash down than it would be to just walk down. Um, this is one of those occasions. Okay, so Septimus says, hey, the coal mine collapsed. We should go check it out. You actually don't go to the coal mine for this part. That is a rookie mistake. Do not do that, even though he said, let's go to the coal mine. What you're actually doing at this part is going to the mayor's house, which is over here. You don't have to dash um, dash slide off of those things, I just do it for swag. So you go inside the mayor's house, and then over here to this part. So we need to talk to everybody in this room, except for the guy in the bed. So we, I talk to her first, I talk to him next, talk to him, and then talk to Ronan here. And then you try to leave the room, just like that. So we got a cutscene here, I'm going to speed this up. It's just Septimus yakking for a while. And I believe this is another occasion where it gives you the option to say yes or no. Um, to enter the dream of uh, Olin coming up here. I'm not sure if it does though. We'll see. So if it does, then in the US version, be prepared to hit the, uh, the X button. But only if it asks you. Okay, so Olin's dream. There is a kind of weird strat for this. So um, as this is loading up into Olin's Olin's nightmare here, normally you're intended to go go up in this way into this door, um, which will put you into this room. What you can actually do after it loads up is just hold down to go down through that door, and that teleports you up over here. And then you can just go up through this door into this area. So as it's loading up, you're just holding down and then hold up again to go up through this. Yep. And then here you want to dash up past this guy. And then do down and right and hit, uh, hit square. Um, this is to minimize the amount of autopilot walking you have to do to get out of the way of that guy. Okay, this part's on autopilot. Of course, you want to remember that left, left, right, left. That's very important. Hopefully, you don't forget. And then during this, you want to hold um, dash left and then head on out back into this room. But here, you want to jump over this and then go and talk to Olin. And this will autopilot us uh, down while this cutscene happens. Okay, so here, some Merg appear. Um, in this cutscene, this is on a timer. You don't actually have to fight anything here. So, what I do to preserve my health is I go hang out in this little hallway here. And for the most part, the Merg leave you alone. Um, one of them actually followed me in here. But if you hang out over here, usually they don't, they don't like, chase you down. Uh, we don't care about the chest that appears in any percent from killing all of the Merg in that scene. And just to preserve the amount of health that we have, um, I don't bother actually fighting the Merg in there. But here's another cutscene. We're going to skip all through this. So really the only important thing in that cutscene for any percent was um, learning the order of switches to press in the coal mine, but if you're speedrunning this, you should know that anyways. So that's really all that is. So we got uh, got some cutscenes here. Um, if you're just barely paying attention to the game while you're running it, um, just know that when Alundra moves to the bottom right of the bed and he stops moving, 
and then you see a line here from the mayor. This is your cue for when you can move again. Right there is when you can control back. So now that we have control again, we're going to head on over to Jess's house. Which is down this way. Right in here. And then this part's autopilot. So we're going to skip this. This is where Jess gives us the, uh, the mining bomb. And notice that I'm still on the Olin's Nightmare split, by the way. Um, the end for me, the end of the Olin's Nightmare split is when I enter the coal mine. So that's why I'm still on that split. So here, after Jess leaves, you want to hold up to get the bomb. Okay, so now that we got the bomb, we're going to make our way over to the coal mine. Then we're going to dash on out of the house here. Um, here, you can go this way, up the stairs. Um, you want to end your dash, like, at the bottom of the stairs or halfway up, because if you keep going, chances are you're either going to bonk into this guy or you're going to fall off of this thing. So if you end it here, you can jump to the left and then dash on up and around that way. Um, in this next screen, there's two ways that you can go. You can either short hop over this, like this, or you can jump up here and dash, which is generally the way that's uh, considered faster. Um, if your health isn't, like, at, let's say, 8 or above, um, you can cut some grass here to see if you can get a, uh, a health drop. This is where a lot of the grass is. So just about up there would be the most, uh, the highest I would go to go and get uh, some health drops. Um, there's some more over here, but if you wanted to continue farming health, just uh, screen transition between these two screens, because yeah, the transition is much faster than it would uh, would be going from town. So just do that. Okay. So now we're gonna head down this way, jump on top of this. And then, right about here, we're going to hit, in the US version, the Start button to open our menu. You can also use the R2 button, which um, sometimes works a bit better. And then the way the menus work is that the cursor wraps around. So it starts off on our sword here. Uh, if you hit left and then down, it'll go on the bomb. Uh, in the US version, you gotta hit X. And then to get rid of the menu, you can either hit Triangle, or you can hit R2 again to dismiss the menu. Okay, so here, what we want to end up doing is um, there's currently some rocks blocking the entrance of the coal mine. We want to blow them up with the bomb. Um, if you just walk all the way up here and then pull out your bomb, we got to wait for it to explode, which is slow. So what we end up doing is while we're down here, um, we equip our bomb, and then as we're moving, we pull out our bomb like that by jumping and then hitting circle. Right there, and then the bomb explodes as we uh, as we throw it. Um, depending on when you pull it out, you have more more or less time. Um, if you blow yourself up with the bomb um, in Alundra, it takes out a lot of your health. So you want to make sure not to do that. So if you want to play it extra safe, go this way and then pull out the bomb as you're making that jump there. And that gives you plenty of time to lay down the bomb without getting uh, getting wrecked by the bomb yourself. Okay, so the coal mine is next. This is the first like big dungeon of the game. So you dismiss that and then walk up to trigger this uh, earthquake cutscene to start off with. And first things first, you want to start spamming the um, pull out bomb button. Go on the left side and rub up against it like that. Follow the train tracks. Around here, you want to pull out the bomb, because we want to get past these. And then throw the bomb there to blow up that. That can be tricky depending on um, where the turtles are there, but don't worry about that part either. That part is also rough. Okay, so this is the first um, Merg fight down here. So in both versions of the game, you're going to want to do short hops across the uh, the water while slashing, and that will generally take care of most of 
Most of the birds here. Just like that. Alright, so we talked to this guy to get his key. And now, um, regarding uh, safety of early runs, there's four chests here. Um, this chest, uh, depending on how much money you have, if you have 50 um, below 60 Gilder, you want to open this chest. Um, if you do have 60 or more Gilder, you can leave this chest alone. This chest has a, um, a money drop in it. Right there. That gives you 30 Gilder. Um, but we don't strictly need that if we're over 63. Just for um, completeness, we'll grab that. So in this chest up here, it has an herb, which um, in your early runs, you're probably going to be healing a lot. So you're going to want to grab that. Um, this chest also has 30 Gilder. We never going to get that chest. In this chest, there is another herb. So uh, if you need the healing, you can get both of those chests that have herbs in them for free herbs. Um, if you're just doing a... Uh, um, a regular attempt, like without safety strats, you wouldn't get any of these. So you just kill the merge here, get the key, and then go ahead and leave. Alright, so when you're going over water here, the fastest way to move is to tap the jump button. It doesn't matter how fast you tap it as long as it's not super slow. So just mash, uh, mash X to go faster. You can see how slow you walk otherwise. So you want to be doing this. Alright, so go this way. You don't have to dash because it's not long enough to matter. Um, if you need some extra help down here, you can also use these to... Um, you can get a health drop from the crate, and you can get a health drop from the slimes. And of course it's not dropping anything for me right now, but um, if your health was a little low from getting wrecked by the, um, the merg there, that's a good way to get some health back. So here, while these turtles are still asleep, you can just hold down like that. Okay, let's make so that they're still asleep. If you go down like this, you can always get past those. So those should never be an issue. So once you get past those, you go back to this room. Um, that key that we got earlier is for this room. So hopefully you remembered that, uh, that passcode for this door. Which is left, left. Jump up on this, right left and then head on out. That code is the same every single time, in case you're wondering. Jump over this, and then head on over into this minecart. Where we're going to minecart over this way. Let's speed this up a little bit. So the next room is a little bit random. There's not much you can do about it. So we're gonna go up into this room, and then keep holding up and dash to go past those turtles. So here you're going to hold down and dash to get through this room. Whether or not there's a turtle in your way is up to the game. Yeah, see there's a turtle in the way right there. <laughs> that's just... Sometimes that's all you can do about that. Alright, so now that we triggered that, we're going to go into this room. Um, if your health is good at this point, when you go into the room, you would pull out your, your bomb like that. And then do that. Uh, my health is not good, so I'm gonna break these crates to see if I can get a health drop, and there's good enough. Seven is good enough. We're gonna go in here, and then in this room, you can see that there's these folding boulders here. Um, you're almost always gonna get hit by the first one, so don't worry about that. And then you want to make it through those without getting hit by the other ones. Here, as you're going through the door, you want to hold left, and then. Um, you're usually like falling down, so it'll it'll fall down like that and you'll hit the switch. Uh, when you hit the switch, you want to make sure that you wait until this thing turns on. So you're generally going to have enough time to get about right there. If the sound effect for this is not playing and you leave the room, it won't count it as turned on. And you'll just have like wasted time. So make sure that that thing is on before you leave. Alright, here. You want to go over here to about this spot. Jump onto here and then dash along this to get out quickly. So that's how you do that. Uh, health is still a little bit shaky here, so let's see if I can get a little bit more here. Um, 
if you can avoid it, don't use your healing herbs unless you're like really about to die from something. Okay, so now that we did that, we need to activate the train tracks for this. So we're going to go over here, hit this by sliding into it. And then we're going to get in the minecart again. I'm going to speed this up, because this is just minecarting. Um, in the next part, we're going to use a bomb to hit a switch while we're uh, moving away from it. It's not strictly faster than just slashing it, but it saves a little bit of time. Make sure that you throw the bomb close enough to it, though. Okay, in this screen, there are three Merg in the center of the screen. In the Japanese version, you can do this very quickly. In the US version, um, it takes a little bit longer because they take two hits. Um, the first two you can generally get before they get off the platform, and then the third one will almost always move off the platform in some direction. The direction it moves is almost always random. So uh, don't worry about it if you have to chase down the, uh, the third one. Alright, so once you get the key from that guy, you get back in the, uh, the minecart here. So we'll keep this going. Okay, and once you get up here again, you have to go and hit the switch one more time. And this one you can do the shoulder charge into. And then you get back on into this one more time. All the way to the first room in the uh, in the dungeon. So in this next part here, you cannot shoulder charge into this. Here's what happens if you do. Alright, hold on. At a full speed shoulder charge. There, it hits it twice. Like that. So, when you're doing this, um, just end your, your dash early and just hit with the sword. I don't know why it only hit it once there. Maybe it depends on how quickly you end your charge. But in practice, doing this in a full speed run, you don't want to shoulder charge into it because it will just it will hit it twice. In the freak occurrence that it only hits it once, then you're good. But 99% of the time, that's not going to be the case. Okay, so this is the big room. This room has some sequence breaks and skips to it. So the quick way to do this room is to head on over here first to the switch. There's multiple ways to do this. One way to do this is to hop on these all the way over here to the switch and then hit it. The other thing that you can do is you could just go on the water here and then jump slash that switch. Uh, so generally, you want to start off by trying to jump on those, but if you miss it like that, you just go and hit that. So then next, you go over here, over to this, and then you can just jump from down here directly onto this platform. And from here, you go over here to this exit. Um, in this room, if you want to get out your bomb immediately, go into the left corner and then throw that on there. Um, the turtle will blow fire onto your bomb to make it explode faster. But here you jump on those, uh, those posts over to this thing. Jump on the posts on the way back if you can. If you miss it, no big deal. Just go around that way. Here you want to dash and go right, and then down and right to get past that, uh, that turtle there. We're going to cross these again to get back over here. Follow these tracks off to the right, down, around this. Over here, use your key on this. Hit that. And then into here. So in the next screen here is the first um, jump that looks like it shouldn't be possible. This jump can occasionally be tricky. We're going to make it slightly easier by doing a... Uh, um, an extended item jump. So, here is where the jump is. We're going to be jumping from here to here. Um, normally this jump is pretty tough to do, but if you do a jump with an item over your head, um, which, again, if you needed to farm for health, here would be a good place to do it. We want to keep one of these, though. Um, so, uh, I'm going to throw this here for now. So there, that jump is just like that, is how you do that regularly. To make it slightly easier, you can jump with an item over your head as I fall to give you um, an extra animation frame of distance on your jump. 
So to illustrate that, uh, let's frame advance this here. So as we jump, we get an extra frame here of um, length on your jump. So you can see right about there, his left foot looks like it's touching the ground. And there he, uh, he landed on the ground. If we just do a regular jump here, like this, and we get all the way over to where the floor is, right there is one frame before, uh, or two frames before we would have touched the ground with an item. And then the next frame, we're on the ground. So, in effect, jumping with an item over your head gives you an extra animation frame of leeway in your jumps, which makes jumps easier. Then after you do that, you head on over here. Watch out for turtles. They can be in random spots. Um, over to here. This chest is a safety herb if you need it. Um, this one is probably the most out-of-the-way one in the coal mines to get. So I would recommend getting this one just along the way. Jump over to here, and then jump down into the, uh, the minecart there. So this minecart ride is really short. Up over here and up these stairs. Dash up this way and down. Um, ideally, this door you want to enter from the right side. So you can see here that, um, or on the left side, you can see I'm on the right. Because, so I exited from the right side and I appeared on the right side of this door. If we go through this and the left side, you can see we're now on the left side of this. So that's the way that going between rooms work in Alundra. So we're going to dash down this way and then stop right between these. Go off to the right a little bit and slash once, twice, three times right there. So that's enough to actually do that puzzle. And then once you do that, go over to this and hop on it three times with some a little bit of weight between each jump. Um, if you jump too quickly there, it won't uh, it won't count as jumping on it. All right, so we're almost done with the uh, the dungeon here. So we dash down here. If your your health is low for whatever reason, you can go get your health back right there. At, uh, at that point there. Like if you got hit by turtles too much. So you exit through the south part here. Continue to dash down here. To this cutscene with Zazen. So we got a little mini boss fight in this screen here. At the very end of the dungeon. So here we're going to dash to the left and then down. Right here. To these guys. So we need to take out all four of these guys. You can see here that when you start the battle, you can't immediately attack the Merg that are here. Uh, they don't become activated until... Uh, until a few seconds afterwards. Um, don't worry about it if you get hit during this fight. Let me actually illustrate this here with uh, the activation stuff. So the one on the right, my sword just went completely through him. And as far as attack patterns go for Merg, um, the ways that they can attack you is they'll generally just jump, jump slash you. So if you're moving towards them, um, they'll generally jump over you. Uh, so that's where I split for the end of the coal mine. And this will be the end of the first tutorial. Um, but first we're going to grab this. This is a uh, health upgrade for the life vessel. And this gives us our health back. So stay tuned for part two of uh, the tutorials, which will cover the next section of the game.